So today we're going to be talking about midazolam or Versed. It's a topic that's very dear and close to my heart because it's a drug that I've used very often. So you're probably watching this video because you're going to be using midazolam or you're wanting to use midazolam or you're a student and you're busy learning about this. So this video is going to break down exactly what it is, how it works and all the things you need to know about it. So stay tuned for that. So midazolam or Versed. It is a classification of a benzodiazepine. It is a sedation or a sedative, makes people less anxious, calms people down, it puts people to sleep. It doesn't take away pain. Remember that, someone who's sleeping can still feel pain. How do we give it? Well, the thing about midazolam is that you can give it IV, you can give it IM, you can give it nasally, you can give it buccally, so in the mouth or gum. It's very rounded, it can go in many ways, it can survive in pretty high heats in terms of temperatures if you're living in a desert. It is very versatile. What else is important? It takes about two to three minutes to have a onset of action. Um, peak effect is about 20 to 30 minutes, so it can take time to really um, settle in. And then it's got a half-life of about two hours. Well, it's one and a half to two and a half hours. So half time, meaning it's half as effective at about two and a half or one and a half hours depending on many factors. So why do we give it? Why is it in our you know, bag of drugs? What does it do? So primarily it's used for sedation. Uh, that's if someone's having seizures, we can give them midazolam. It's not the best benzodiazepine for seizures, but that's a whole nother story. If you'd like me to talk about that, please drop a comment in the comments below. It can be used as an induction agent. However, it's not the best induction agent. It can be used for a anxiolytic, uh, which is to calm people down. So if someone's feeling like really stressed out, you can also just give them this to like kind of just bring down their mood and relax. The other thing that midazolam does that people sometimes get a bit confused about is that there is not retrograde amnesia. So if you give someone midazolam, they're not going to forget what's happened to them. They're going to forget what's going to happen to them. So if you're going to be cardioverting, midazolam is going to make them forget the cardiovert. I looked at some literature and I saw how much midazolam do you actually need to give someone to make them forget what's going to happen. And that is actually 0.06 milligrams per kilogram. So that means that you would give me about five milligrams IV, which is not a whole lot. Um, and I will then have memory loss of what is about to happen. The thing that was interesting about that um, article, which I'll drop below, is that they said that the older the patient is, the less they need for that amnesia. It's good to know. What else does midazolam do? So the pros is kind of what I've just spoken about. It can be given in many routes. The dosages for each route is obviously a bit different and different places use different um, dosages. So I'm not going to go through quite the dosages of every route and for every issue for, you know, like sedation or whatever the case is. But in my opinion, five milligrams will pretty much put any adult to sleep. Then in terms of, uh, you know, like how it comes or its concentration, normally it would come in a, a vial that's got 15 milligrams in three mils or you can have five milligrams in five mils. It depends on whatever you know, con concentration you have. Just, just realize that five milligrams in five mils is very different to 15 milligrams in three mils. Big difference. A amp of 15 milligrams in three mils could put three adults to sleep. A vial of five milligrams in five mils could put one person to sleep. Big difference. Don't go giving someone 15 milligrams. So what are the issues with midazolam or benzos in general? So benzos, specifically midazolam, which is significantly more potent than lorazepam or valium. However, it drops um, breathing. So patients can go quite apneic. They can, they can start to hypoventilate. And the other issue is that it drops blood pressures. So these are two things to be very cautious about, which is very similar to like morphine or something like that. It can drop breathing, it puts them to sleep, and it drops blood pressure. So just be aware of that when you're giving in these, these things to patients who are severely hypotensive or hypovolemic. It's very versatile. So if we know how to use it, if we have experience in using it, it really can do the job. Just remember, there are issues with it, drops breathing, drops blood pressures, but otherwise it's a really handy tool to have. And if you know how to use it, I'd recommend using it. 